How's it going, everybody? It is Lockhart here, your unofficial, sort of official, mostly official content creator for Aethergazer. And today, we're going to be doing a build guide for our husbando on somewhat limited, not limited banner, Oceanus. And he is so cool. I love everything about him. I enjoy his aesthetic. Um, I love that he gives off this like cool, like mean character energy. I like that he uses a scarf. I love that he has a water affinity because um, I naturally gravitate to like characters who use like water attacks as well. Um, his play style is really flashy. I will say he's definitely like got the coolest play style feels really good, really responsive. When I did the trials, um, just to test them out, I was like, yeah, like I'm definitely going to pull. So then I uh, did my pull video and that was crazy. Still kind of shook from it since it was just earlier today. Um, give it a go and let's see where you're at with him. But I'm going to give you some tips. Uh, this is going to be a different format for my last build video. So any feedback is appreciated. If you like this current format, you feel like it's all right. Um, let me know if you feel like the other one was a little bit better visually, then let me know that as well. Um, the only difference is that it would be easier for me to be able to make a build on characters that I like because then I'll naturally pull for them. So my pull videos will come out followed by my build videos. Now, uh, let's go into his skills really qu quickly. His ebb and flow, brandish his sword to control the flow of water, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically creates a, a clone on the third hit. Uh, so that Riptide is what it's called. And then the Tributary Ghost. We're going to call it a clone because that is too many words for me. <laughs> and then on the field, it dashes toward a locked enemy, dealing water damage and res uh, resets the duration of the clone. So it creates a clone by casting Russian River or Ocean Blur. Right. So uh, with him, you can create a uh, maximum of two clones uh, using the basic attack method. Right. Um, when we talk about rushing river dashes to the target dealing water damage to an enemy creates a clone and triggers a uh, tributary flow upon letting it hit at the end of the skill casting all tributary uh, clones on the field deal water damage to their surroundings refreshes the duration of the clones and triggers a uh, tributary flow again and then tributary flow deals water damage to surrounding enemies when a ghost is created right so then we talk about tide search this is skill two Disappears into the air, deals water damage to all enemies in the front, expends all c clones on the field when the mod owns two or more traces. So you want to have at least two or more. Increases melee damage dealt to the mod, uh, dealt by the mod based on the clones used. Then recreates the clone ghost uh, expended around the locked on enemy while the water dealing water damage to the surrounding enemies. So with this one. Uh, you do vanish and you cannot be targeted. Um, so you do have to have at least two uh, traces in order to make that happen. Um, you get a 6% increase per clone absorbed, which is great. So um, that lasts for eight seconds and generates the same amount of clones that you used around the enemy and the clones deal an additional uh, damage to their surroundings, which is awesome. So when we talk about Great Confluence, which is your skill three, absorb the clones that are within range around the mod. So you, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to make sure you're minding clone placement because they go back and forth per three skills used, uh, three normal attacks used, increases the skill damage dealt by the clone based on the, uh, dealt by the mod based on the clone absorbed. Also expends all traces present. So you want to do this with four. And the reason for that is uh, for every, uh, for every clone, that you take in um it's the six percent and then for each trace consumed uh the clones deal an extra damage of 12 percent and that lasts for eight seconds as well so then afterwards you deal quite a bit of damage for each clone absorbed uh you will produce the equivalent number of clones temporary dealing uh damage um each of them so it is pretty tricky and then so when we get into the ultimate uh, generates a flow blade and slashes with it, dealing water damage over a large area, increases the team members' water damage and melee damage, gains ultimate skill charge when the mod or teammate triggers extremity. 
dodge. So with this, uh, for each clone on the field, you boost water damage by 6% and melee damage by 6%, lasting for 10 seconds. Then the alt is recharged by 8% every time Oceanus and teammate triggers a perfect dodge. This method of alt recharge can be triggered once every 2 seconds. Um, and then his perfect dodge, which actually has a little bit more to it than we could, what than you would normally assume. So on the perfect dodge, this is where you create one clone max. Uh, all clones deal uh, blank to their surroundings, gain one trace if the Oce if Oceanus has at least one trace and uses a basic attack within one second after the perfect dodge, you will consume one trace and deal 300% attack damage in an AoE and refresh the buff uptime for this skill, for your skill 3 if there are any. So um, you also do get armor penetration by for 18% which lasts for 6% and then the cooldown for uh, the penetration boost is uh, whenever you dodge so it's crazy abusable for bosses that's super nutty like what so let's go quickly into codes and with codes you are looking to go all yellow which is great for me so uh when we go through the first one, reduces the effective ghost uh, clone absorption range from Great Confluence by 33.33%, but increases the skill damage from absorption. Uh, so the skill damage by 6, 6 18, and, or 36%, depending on the amount of clones absorbed, right? Maximum being 36 if you do all three. Two from the skill one, one from dodge. Triggers Riptide each time a normal attack crits. The effect can trigger once every three seconds. So, again, Riptide is when the clone attacks, which is pretty cool. And then the last one is uh, increase your water damage, uh, water damage dealt by the mod by 18% for three seconds when the mod and the ghost hit the same enemy within 0.3 seconds when the ghost hit the enemy within that time, reduce the water resistance of the enemy hit by 12% for three seconds. So. Just to quickly recap, we have a lot of damage increase when you absorb clones. We have a lot of, uh, you have armor pen for dodging and attacking right after as long as you have a trace. And then if you have this, uh, which you should be making a clone all the time, you are going to be getting an also additional water resist, um, reducing the water resist for that enemy at 12 seconds for three seconds. Uh, 12 percent for three seconds, sorry. So it is kind of super nutty. And how all of this works. So obviously it's very interconnected. His gameplay is very fast. Because like 0 0.3 seconds basically means it's almost like, you know, they hit at the same time. There's not a whole lot of room for error, right? Um, when we talk about his functor. Uh, so let's get into that very quickly. I got lucky, pulled it uh, on my first pull. However, this is like nuts. You get an extra 10%. Uh, crit rate just for having it, um, which is amazing. Uh, just to go over very quickly, the basic attacks, skill usage, and dodging will accumulate stacks. Once you reach the maximum amount of stacks, which is 20, you stop accumulating stacks, or, or if you get inflicted with CC, uh, while accumulating stacks, a temporary clone will appear and deal a, a X amount of hits to the locked enemy. Uh, it is equivalent to the number of stacks accumulated before the clone summon. So new stacks cannot be gained during the period when the clone is dealing damage. Each basic attack counts as one stack. Each dodge or skill counts as five stacks. And then again, the max number is 20. The clone starts by dealing 100% attack damage on the first hit. Each subsequent stack consumed, the damage is increased by 6%. These all count as skill damage. Assuming you have just a regular functor uh, level one, which uh, if you get at least double S, which you can farm through recurring dream, recurring dream, uh, you'll get him to SS and you'll be able to get that plus two. So you can see this like the plus twin there. And then if we go to maximum tax, blah, and, but instead of six, it's nine percent. For every stack expended so again you're accumulating these stacks quite heavily and uh it is uh crazy 
So, do you want to get his functor? Yes. If you are going to main him, it is highly recommended that you get his functor just so that way you can really maximize his damage. He is basically your main DPS. The one thing um, about him is that his ult again is really long. It is one of the longest um, animations in the game. So you really want to get Enlil, which is going to be a free unit. You just get his shards by playing in the event. Uh, so that way it helps uh, him use the duel. The duel, will, uh, when using their ult, is a 50% damage boost, which is just nuts. And uh, you can always give him a necro, ne what's it called? Nibble, uh, so that way it can reduce uh, the cooldown time. So just in case anybody is curious what that looks like, uh, it is this sigil right here. Uh, and you want to get I can't I won't even try but anyway you want to use this one so that way uh, you get that charge speed of 30% and again because it is a dual alt it will help him a lot right but this is everything about him uh, helps him become a super damage dealer having Enlil solves his uh, being able to hit multiple enemies at the same time because he's very like focused on a single enemy at a time but Enlil gathers units together or enemies together so that way it kind of closes that gap so what do you want for his sigils well here we go you want to grab mermaid's tier naturally increase water damage by 10 percent lower water resistant for effective enemy by five percent for five seconds whenever the attack hits effects from multiple sigils do not stack so increase crit damage by five percent when landing an attack on the enemy with lowered water resist right super easy makes sense uh this this is the the, the one three and five uh, for him so for your two four and six you're gonna want to get decree of the waves so this one is the one that comes out with him uh not a bad one to have get one trace when the skill hits uh triggers only once every 12 seconds when the enemy uh when hitting an enemy with a normal attack increases attack by nine percent for nine seconds it triggers once every 10 seconds when they when hitting an enemy within three seconds of expending the traces increase crit damage by 50 percent for nine seconds triggers only once every second it stacks up to two times super easy if you for some reason go super hard and get him to omega for your slots five and six you want to do night owls raid so increase your melee damage after landing a basic attack it increases skill damage by five percent lasting for seven seconds this can only be triggered by 10 seconds after landing a skill it increases basic attack damage by 15 seconds last for seven this is triggered every 10 seconds or you can do griffin's pride um enchants i think at this point in time we're pretty familiar when it comes to uh when it comes to um dps you want fierce assault right uh just helps all of his dps if you can get uh, Berserk as well as Enraged because you also want that uh, crit rate and you want that crit damage. Don't mind this. I literally just did everything. So his no enchant on any of my characters will ever be good. <laughs> and then loop back is always great because uh, whether you're doing solo duel, it's always good to get his alt up. You can get his water damage increase, which is good. You can get uh, decrease dodge as well which will always help him. I think I had a really, so loop back is always good to have. And then uh, if you can get decrease um, dodge cooldown, that would be amazing as well. And when we go over to what we have now as warps in your slots one and two, let me see if I can find it in your slots one and two, you really do want power up melee. Uh, increased melee damage per two stacks you know it's always nice to have so uh, you definitely want to grab that uh, it just helps overall wow did i i thought there we go ah so in your slots one and two you're definitely going to want that uh, or you can go with uh, um let's just go for it really quickly whoops the daisies or you go with the judge, you know, 6.5 damage to enemies with more than 65% health, or 3.3% to enemies with lower than 40% health. With your slots three and four, you can also go with EM Flux, the higher the HP, the more uh, damage, no more than 4%, or 
or you can go with Savage. The lower the HP, the more damage, the more than 12%. Um, or you can go with this one. I think it's this one. Telepath Force Field. So um, you all you want to do this for your tier three. So damage by 3.5 percent because that's the one that also does a lot of uh, damage overall as well. And then for slots five and six, you have uh, more damage on your skill too, which is actually just really good. I'm just gonna grab that right now. Um, and you can also do uh, increased damage, skill damage by increased skill damage as well, which is always good to have. Let's just go ahead and get that now. Anyway, you want to take three left and three right if you want to do these. So, just so that way. Okay. Pair those together. Whoops. Oh, I need a cap increase. Anyway, there we are. Okay, so. Those are your warps. You can also do the... Uh, oh, here we go. Sorry. We can also go with the uh, flashback, which is a uh, cooldown of skill reduced by 2%. Or uh, I guess you can also do this one. More damage when you're modified. Mode, which you will be because you'll be dodging all the time. Um, so when we talk about... Wait. Did we miss anything? Oh, yes. Oh, well, I guess we also went over... Uh, we went over team comps. So you went Enlil. Um, and you can also do S-Levy. Uh, so that way, you know, if you get if you do S-Levy with this team because you want to get some sort of faction bonus, um, if you do S-Levy, at least that way you can... Um, you'll, sorry, you'll have to change your sigils to triple red. Uh, if you don't, it just helps with, like, uh, the HP and... Sorry, uh, helps with all of like the um, health issues, healing, blah blah blah. Uh, good for armor pen as well. And then for Enlil, you really want to get that nimble, so that way you recruit, uh, reduce the cooldown time. And I think, honestly, that is kind of it. So. One last thing that we're going to do is we're just going to run them through a quick trials again. We're going to take a look at all those skills. Um, because, again, he is such a flashy character. He is. I feel like he just is super smooth uh, in terms of how he plays. I like that his dodge is immediate. There's no lag in between uh, his dodge, which feels really nice. You know, your A-rank characters have like a... Sh I mean, a, a little... Uh, a dodge that is just not as good... So you can see down there, I have an icon that says that I have one clone on the field. Every time I land that third attack, it will be. And you can see that I'm like refreshing there. There we are. I have two clones. If I can get my clones to get close, perfect. I can use my skill get them absorbed I used all my traces as well which also helped in my DPS I didn't get a chance to use my ult. oh you saw that he was using his scarf a little bit there it is just okay that is a really quick showcase of how he plays um, but honestly he's super dope <laughs> I think he's just such a cool, he's such a cool character. He plays super well. So um, let me know what you guys think. Did I miss something? I feel like, I feel like I, I'm so used to making like a huge like presentation, but now that we have warps available, I can just like freely go through them. And now I know all their names, um, which helps a lot. And I can just showcase, like click through it, which is really different for me, but feels really nice. 
Um, but yeah, if you've watched until this point, please feel free to uh, subscribe and like and comment and let me know what you think. Uh, for those of you who've watched me for a long time, let me know what you think of the new format. I'll, I, I think that is me uh, for now. And uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Honestly, uh, content creating has been amazing so far. I'm still moving up slowly and my channel is growing slowly. And any growth is better than no growth. So it feels really nice. And uh, I'm happy to see that um, you guys are liking videos. Um, and the feedback has been phenomenal. So I love this game. I hope you guys like it too. And uh, feel free to join my Discord and, you know, chat it up. Because uh, I do have a Discord down there as well. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for all the odds. Uh, <laughs> I'm still shook that I got Oceana so easily. I'm like taking a look at like my stars i'm like oh my god i got so much um but that's it thank you so much i will t see y'all in the next one bye